let's be honest with with the situation here. You're two and nine. Your coach is not back next year. Your GM's probably not back next year. And I don't think Eli's back next year. I would start taking inventory. I'm okay with that. We don't like to see Hall of Famers benched. You know, remember Joe Montana kicked him to the curb and he went to uh, Kansas City. But you had Steve Young behind him there. Brett Favre, see ya. You had Aaron Rodgers there. Peyton Manning with Andrew Luck. Oh, they can't get rid of Peyton Manning. Yes, you can. It's really easy. He's not a good quarterback anymore. We hate to say it, but it's true. Eli's not a great quarterback anymore. Is he a good quarterback? He can be. But there was nothing this year where you went, man, you got to keep him out there. He gives you a best, better chance of winning. I have no idea. I have no idea. But with Geno Smith, we have an idea of who he is and what he is. I don't know about this rookie, Davis Webb. That's what I would want to see. That's all. Ben McAdoo talked about this, the uh, Giants head coach. And um, he says that he is uh, at peace with his decision. I understand the emotions. I understand the responses. Um, it's been a tough couple days, uh, but we, we feel we have to put our emotions uh, aside and um, make, the best, uh, make the best decision for the New York football giants. And uh, I'm at peace with the decision. All right. And then he uh, talked about how he feels about Eli right now. Do you have empathy for what Eli is going through right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I said, it's, it's <laughs> tough. It's, it's hard. No one expected us to be where we are right now, including me. I'm disappointed that we're, that we're here. But with that being said, we got to move forward. Okay, do you have empathy for Eli? What did you think he was going to say? No. Toughen up. Come on, you got two rings. You're a Manning. You're a Hall of Famer. You're making $25 million. I'm going to be fired in six weeks. You know? <laughs> it's... it's Eli Manning, and it's New York, and he's won two Super Bowls, and he's Peyton's brother, and this is a big deal. Or at least it appears to be a big deal. We don't like legends to be kicked to the curb like this. But it happens. You're 37. What have you done recently? How many playoff appearances do the Giants have with Eli Manning? Now, they won two Super Bowls. I get it. I understand that. But the outrage over Eli being benched there shouldn't be as much outrage that he is not going to play. Maybe how he was pl- how he was placed on the bench is one thing. Six playoff appearances in how many years for? Uh, in his entire career, but one, 15 years? One playoff appearance since 2011. Okay. He hasn't done anything. Yeah, Fritzy. Why didn't they ask McAdoo what makes you so convinced that Geno Smith is a better option than Eli Manning at this point to beat the Raiders in Oakland Sunday? That's a good question. Why isn't Davis Webb suiting up? I mean... I, I, would, I would have no problem with this scenario. Eli gets to play, but understands that we're going to bring in Geno and or Davis Webb. That I need this collectively, that we're going to make this work, and we're going to find out what we have here, because there's no guarantees. And if he doesn't like that, then we'll say, okay, then you can sit down, and then I'll play these other two. Yeah, Paul. I brought this up yesterday. Don't you still think this is more about tanking than Eli? They right now have the third pick in the draft, and Geno Smith being on the field probably ensures that they don't win a lot more ball games. Eli Manning could want could win a couple. I think if you put Davis Webb out there, then you then you have a better chance of tanking. But what if Davis Webb plays above average? Then you. But, but we don't, we have no. We've seen Geno play above average, not often. I mean, the game against Green Bay when he was with the Jets, he played really well. I don't know how he'll play against Oakland. Oakland fighting for its life. Playoff-wise, playing in the black hole, Geno might give you a better chance than Eli does, believe it or not. And you have no wide receivers. This is a team that's building its franchise around a wide receiver in Odell Beckham. Nobody does that. Like, that's so flawed. At least the Steelers have Le'Veon Bell. You have been there, and they build up their defense. But you're not building your team around a wide receiver. Even the Niners didn't do that with Jerry uh, Jerry Rice. Like, I, I mean, it's flawed with what's what's happened here. But there's going to be changes. There'll be changes, you know, with that coaching staff and probably Eli Manning as well. But I'm watching now with all, you know, when it gets to December, you know, we start looking at these quarterbacks and going, wait a minute, who's starting? Geno Smith, Blaine Gabbard, Tom Savage, Brett Hundley. They're starting. 
the, we have three quarterbacks who are on the Patriots roster to start the year. They're starting on Sunday, Brady, Garoppolo, and Brissett. Case Keenum was a backup. Now he's one of the stars for the Vikings. Like, it's crazy how we start the season looking at our quarterbacking situation. And then you get to December and go, who are these guys? How are they starting? That's where we are. The most important position in all the sports, and you got some of these guys who are starting. That's how tenuous all of this is. But Eli, I don't feel sorry for him. I don't. Uh, what I'd like to have had the Giants handle a little bit better with a little bit more decorum and maybe a, a softer way of saying, hey, Eli, here's the deal. Yeah, but man, this is this next man up. That's, that's all this comes down to. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.